Hi, this is Farshid with another video just for you. In this video, I will show you how to install an electrical outlet for charging an EV such as Tesla. If you are not comfortable working with electrical circuits, please use this video as reference and hire a professional to do the work. If you are a subscriber to my channel, thank you and welcome back. If you're not, please consider subscribing. It's free. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. Okay, adding an outlet in the garage for charging of Tesla. I've chosen to go with this style of a connector, I should say outlet, which is this style here similar to what you see on typical three conductor clothes dryers. It will take 10 gauge wire and I like to use a double gang J box. It makes it a little bit easier to manipulate that wire in there since it's a uh, heavier gauge wire. And I've uh, chosen these uh, double pole 30 amp breaker. Uh, this is a GE panel. So the breakers are in obviously in the off position right now. Here are some of the tools I use to do this project. A multimeter, electrical rated gloves, a drywall saw, utility knife, wire strippers with gauge, electrical rated screwdrivers, small level, speed square, needle nose pliers, pencil, and a tape measure. Now a word from our sponsor. Use the junction box to draw the outline of the cut, then use a drywall saw to cut the hole. There we have it. All right, the hole is cut. Now we're gonna do a quick uh, dry fit. Okay, that's the next step. Running that 10 gauge wire down here and we'll strip it, mount it up. Okay, the wire is through the J box. I got it uh, stripped back. So before doing any kind of a assembly or I should say wiring, this is how I'm gonna set mine up. I like to do it this way instead of, some people like to do it upside down, but that puts a lot of stress on this part of this cable here. So just, just like that. Use a wire strippers with a gauge, in this case 10, to make sure that the conductor doesn't get nicked and compromised. So we have the outlet wired between the red and the black. We should get uh, 220, 240. And between either the red and the white or black and the white, we should get 110, 120 range, right? So here's our outlet and here's our connection. Next thing I do is I'll connect the outlet to the J box and then push the whole thing into the wall. Again, it makes it much, much easier when you're dealing with heavy gauge wire like this. Okay, the outlet is wired and it's assembled to the box. Now we push this back into the wall. I can see here. Yeah, it's a pretty stiff wire. Now, aren't you glad you wired that outlet first? 
and mounted it into the J box first. Yes, I am. Here we go, mount this onto the wall. Next thing we tighten this screw, this screw to bring those flaps over so they can uh, grab onto the back of the drywall. All right, tighten this one up and this one a few turns and this is the last turn right there done now we do our wiring up here carefully okay the electrical connections are made always take precautions if you can turn the main breaker off so you're working inside of a dead panel but if you cannot just take all the precautions necessary Definitely turn the breakers off, the ones that you're working on. And then I went ahead and turned the one next to it off just in case uh, I run across that uh, terminal. I didn't want it to uh, run across a live terminal. Use all the precautions necessary when you're working inside of a panel, regardless if it's on or off. I always use electrical rated uh, screwdrivers. This one here, uh, as you can tell, has an insulated uh, handle, or I should say the rod going out. Just when you stick the screwdriver in there, it make your, it ensures that it doesn't uh, uh, create any kind of a short. I uh, also wear electrical rated uh, gloves when I'm working inside of these, regardless if they're on or off. In this particular case, I could not turn the panel off, but anything that I was working close to, I turned off. For example, over here, you can see the white wire that I connected up to the neutral bus. Um, it's next to this breaker over here. I went ahead and turned the breaker off just in case again. All right, with the breaker turned on, 247 volts on the two outer legs. The top one and the right one, reading at 123 top one and the left one 123 okay we are finished so there's our outlet it's powered up and last finishing touches is to mark the breaker looks like they have most of the stuff marked on the breaker side i went ahead and marked it on the card as well so there you have it all right, we are charging. So we're at uh, 24 amp, which that's normal limit set for a 30 amp breaker that we have installed. So we're charging at six kilowatt per hour. And that's the ultimate proof that we got it right and it's working. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification.